chemistry is the study of substances uh, that come together to form new substances, right? So let's look at all the uh, different types of most basic substances that are on the universe. Well, you find those on the periodic table. <clears throat> and uh, the atoms of each, uh, of each one of these types of elements has very special properties. For example, everything in group one, as we discussed earlier, has uh, one balance electrons. Everything in the group two has two balance electrons. Let's skip over the transition metals for now because they could have uh, different numbers of balance electrons. Uh, this would be group three, starting with boron. Those are three balance electrons. Group four, four balance electrons. Group five, five balance electrons. Group six, has six balance electrons. Group seven, has seven balance electrons. And the group eight have zero balance electrons because uh, their octet is filled. So it would be simple to say, and also true, that uh, th these elements in group seven are very happy when they gain one electron to make the eight. So a, a lot of these guys in here, are, are you might see them with a charge of minus one on them since they gained the electron, okay? And that's what makes them stable. And uh, if you look at the group sixes, they love to gain two electrons for the same reason. Right? Uh, elements of group five love to gain three electrons to have a charge of negative three uh, to make the eight. And uh, w once you get to the group fours, it can kind of go either way where they can, in many cases, gain four electrons or lose four, um, depending on uh, whether it's energetically uh, favorable. Uh, things on the right hand of the periodic table are more electronegative. So since they love electrons, it's easier for them to gain uh, a negative charge to make the octet. And then um, if you look at to the left, where you get the group one, group two, uh, group threes, as well as the transition metals, th those guys are going to have positive charge, uh, meaning that they're going to be losing electrons because they're not as electronegative, right? So it's easier for them to... Um, lose a few of them so, so that in their subshell they still have eight, but now they're not carrying all this extra baggage around, right? So the, the, the elements in group one, you might see these guys with a plus one charge. Elements in group two uh, have, have a plus two charge. Some of these elements in group three, you might see plus three because they're giving away that number of electrons. And when you give away a negative charge, what happens? It becomes more positive, right? So <clears throat> let's try to combine some of these guys. Um, for example, if I have something like a group one that has one balance electron to give, because it's not as electronegative, it's gonna love uh, these group sevens, right? Because it, it's a perfect match. Group seven need one electron. Well, everything in group one has one to give, so, so these guys are going to form um, stable molecules that has an overall net charge of zero, otherwise it wouldn't be very stable. And uh, if you look at what's going on inside the molecule, well, uh, sodium gave its one electron to chlorine. Right? <clears throat> a, a great way to remember this is to first write down your elements that you want to combine. Then write down your charges, which are nine times out of ten always the same, unless you're talking about transition metals. And finally, the number of atoms that is required of each. In this case, it was really easy. We just need one atom of sodium to balance out the one atom of chlorine. And since positive one times one is positive one, negative one times one is negative one. And when you add these two up, you get zero. All right. Let's try uh, another group seven, like bromine. And uh, let's hook it up with some potassium. Well, if we combine our elements, we're going to have to first write the charges. Uh, potassium is going to be a plus one since it's in group one, one balance electron to give to the more electronegative bromine. Bromine is a group seven. It now has uh, one electron. Its octet is uh, filled. So you really just need one atom of each, right? 
to make an all nut chart of zero. That works out nicely. Now, what if we had something like um, a group six, like oxygen, and we want to combine it with hydrogen to make something that's nice and stable? Well, first we'll write down our elements. So if oxygen is a group six, that's six valence electrons, it's pretty electronegative, so it's going to gain the electron, so it's going to have a negative charge. And what's the number? Well, if it already has six valence and it needs two to complete the octet, it's going to be minus two. Okay. Let's draw the charge in on the um, hydrogen. Well, hydrogen is in group one. So that means it has one balanced electron to give, since it's not as electronegative as the oxygen. So it's going to be plus one. So we drew our elements, the hydrogen and the oxygen, we drew our charges. Now let's draw the number of atoms. Now remember, it has to have an overall net charge of zero. So how do we do that? Well, we have uh, one, a uh, one atom of oxygen here, and uh, well, if we have two atoms of hydrogen, that'll do it because we have plus one times two, which is plus two, and we have negative two times one is negative two. Add these together to equal zero. That, that part takes a little bit of a practice if you're dealing with um, something that's not as simple as combining a group one with a group seven uh, to make eight, uh, because you, you might have to find something like, um, like the least common multiple, right? Remember when you did fractions to find the least common denominator? Same thing. So of course, H2O is water, and that's a nice stable molecule, overall net charge of zero. Um, let's combine uh, some other elements. What about magnesium and oxygen? What happens when those guys come together? Well, let's write down our elements first, Mg and O. Now we need to draw in our charges. Well, Mg is in group two, so it's got to be plus two. Right? And uh, the reason why it's positive is, is because it's going to give its electrons to the more electronegative oxygen. I was just going to take those two bad boys right here. And it's going to want two because remember, oxygen's in group six. It needs to make eight. Right? And again, it's easier for magnesium to just ditch its two uh, electrons. It's kind of extra baggage. So now in its uh, subgroup or sub level, it, it has a, its octet filled. And this works out nicely because plus two minus two, well, that already equals zero. So it's one atom of each one. We can draw in the one or we can just leave it out. And that's how you write magnesium oxide, MgO. It, it would never be Mg2O for that reason. All right, or MgO2. Or MgO3 or whatever, these are wrong. Okay, it's just, magnesium oxide is just MgO. Let's try um, another group two with a group six. Oxygen, always have a minus two charge. Let's say we wanted to combine that with beryllium. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's draw elements first, then our charges. Beryllium is a group two. That's going to be plus two. It's going to give it to the more electronegative oxygen, which is going to gain the two electrons, since uh, electronegativity means uh, that it's electron withdrawing. It loves electrons, right? And again, that works out nicely. So that's just uh, beryllium oxide, BEO. Okay. And um, what about group threes? Say we wanted to combine boron with fluorine. Well, we write our elements, B and F. Let's write down the charges. The boron is not a transition metal, it's, it's a group three, so it's never gonna change. So it's always gonna be a plus three where it gives its electrons to the more electronegative fluorine. However, well, fluorine's gonna have a negative one charge. It's in a group seven. So we can only handle one extra electron. So now we gotta do some thinking. Well, let's draw the number of atoms that we have. Okay, so this is one, two. Finally, our last step. How are we going to make an overall chart of zero? 
Well, we need to find the least common multiple between um, the 3 and the 1. And uh, it's going to be positive 3 times 1 is positive 3. Negative 1 times what is negative 3? Well, it's got to be 3. Okay. So that's why if you combine boron and fluorine, you're going to get BF3. It wouldn't be um, BF2, it wouldn't be B2F5. Um, this would be the most common form right here. Right. Element, charges, atoms. Let's try another one. How about uh, if you combine aluminum and chlorine? Write out the elements, let's draw the charges in. Aluminum's in a group three. It's going to give them away, so it becomes positive to the more electronegative chlorine. Chlorine's a group seven. Its charge is always minus one. Always. But we have a problem here. It has to have an overall net charge of zero. Plus three minus one is not zero. How do we make it zero? Well, we have to find a least common multiple between the three and the one and draw in the number of atoms that we have. So it would uh, the easiest way would be to go one atom of aluminum to make plus three, since plus three times one is three. And then let's combine that with three atoms of chlorine. That's going to be a negative three charge. So aluminum, the proper way to write aluminum chloride wouldn't just be Al2Cl or AlCl. It would have to be AlCl3. And this, this rule, element charge atom, applies for every combination that you'd ever want to write out, right? Let's try something, a, uh, all right, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll do another common um, molecule, methane, which is uh, your simplest hydrocarbon. It's um, carbon and hydrogen. If we combine these two together, you're going to have carbon become uh, negative since it's the more electronegative atom. So it's going to be negative four because it's going to gain four electrons to make its octet or eight. And hydrogen is going to be plus one. And uh, to make a net charge of zero, let's just go to the number of atoms that we need of each one. The simplest way is just to have minus four times one, negative four. And if we use four atoms of hydrogen, we have plus one times four, which is positive four. So methane is CH4. Now you might ask why I put the carbon first uh, and not the uh, hydrogen. Well. I guess you could have wrote it like this, but the more common way uh, when you're talking about organic molecules is uh, to always put the carbon first, since that is really the um, the skeleton of uh, any type of organic molecule, right? But that, that, that's just really semantics. I mean, the point is that you know whether you write H4C or CH4, uh, you you know exactly how many atoms of carbon combine with um, a specific number of uh, hydrogens. <clears throat> so let's try uh, something a little more complicated. Um, if we were to combine aluminum with oxygen. Well, first you write out our elements. I if you write the charges first, you'll never get it wrong. Oxygen is more electronegative uh, than aluminum. So it's going to take the electrons, so it's going to become negative. And uh, it's going to gain two, right, to make the octet, since it's a group six. Aluminum has three to lose. It's in the same group three. But, uh, you know, now we've got a problem again. We need an overall net charge of zero, so how do we get the plus three to cancel out the minus two? Well, you've got to find at least common multiple. And that's going to be six. So you're going to wind up with plus six or minus six. How many uh, atoms of... Aluminum, do you need two? Since negative three times two is positive six. How many atoms of oxygen do you need? Three. 
since negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So that's why aluminum oxide, it, it wouldn't be Al2O, wouldn't be AlO or AlO2. It's always going to be Al2O3. All right. And that's how you write aluminum oxide. So again, elements, chargers, then atoms. Uh, if, if you write, if you remember those three in sequence, you'll never get it wrong. I mean, the, the list can go on and on. How do you write calcium chloride? Elements, charges, and then um, the number of atoms that you need to make an overall net charge of zero. Plus two times one is plus two. Negative one times two is minus two. Calcium chloride is always written as CaCl2. Let, let, let's try a, a metal like um, iron oxide. It gets a little bit tricky here uh, because they would have to specify whether you're talking about iron 2 oxide or iron 3 oxide. Why would they have to specify that? Well, because iron's a transition metal. Okay? It's here with this group uh, where these elements have identity issues. They're not really sure uh, how many balanced electrons they want. So you have to do a little bit of thinking in terms of interpreting the name. They, 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 would, they would never just write, or the, an inappropriate way to write this would be just iron oxide because you don't know which iron you're talking about, iron 2 or iron 3. Okay, Iron 2 means it has two balanced electrons. So the charge is going to be plus 2, and it's going to give uh, its electrons to the more electronegative of oxygen. Oxygen is always going to be in group 6, so it's always going to be a minus 2. So the correct way, after you write in the number of atoms, 1, 1, not skip over that step, even though this is an easy one, plus 2, minus 2, cancel out to get 0. Iron 2 oxide is written as FeO. But now if you have iron 3 oxide, well, <clears throat> now you're talking about an iron that has three balanced electrons. So it's Fe plus 3. O, remember, is always in group 6, so it's always going to be minus 2. So we wrote our elements in, we wrote our charges in. Now we got to write in the number of atoms to have an overall net charge of 0. Well, what's the least common multiple? 6. You have plus 6, minus 6 which means you need plus three times two atoms of iron to get plus six, and uh, negative two times three atoms of oxygen to get minus six. Iron three oxide is written as Fe2O3. All right, big difference. That's why transition metals are a little bit more confusing, but the same rules still apply. Element, then charges, then atoms. And um, polyatomics, pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's say we had something like um, sodium uh, sulfate. Sulfate is, uh, well, I knew sulfate was SO4, but if you know that um, sulfate is sulfur plus oxygen, you can kind of figure this part out as well. In other words, what would the charge be on this polyatomic group? Well, oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur, right? So it's going to take the electrons and to have always a minus two charge. Right? What group is sulfur? Well, sulfur is in group six also, but it's going to give them to the oxygen. So it's going to be plus six. Right? So that in its subgroup or sublevel, uh, its octet is filled. So if you combine these two guys together, you got minus two times four atoms of oxygen is minus eight. Plus six times one atom of sulfur is plus six. So the charge on the polyatomic is going to be negative two, plus six and negative eight. So if this charge is negative two on this um, polyatomic, 
and you know that sodium is a group one, it's going to have a charge of plus one. How many atoms do you need of each to have an overall net charge of zero? Well, the least common multiple is going to be two. And uh, so you need a plus two and a minus two for them to cancel out to equal zero. Plus one times two atoms equals plus two. Negative two times one polyatomic uh, entity, uh, if you want to call it that, since more than one atom is going to be minus two. So sodium sulfate is Na2SO4, right? Uh, same thing with um, H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Um, I just gave you the answer, but why is it H2SO4? Let's see. Well, does that make sense? Let's say you were asked to uh, go in reverse. In other words, is this a stable molecule? Can this exist? Sure it can. Why? Because... The charge on the polyatomic is minus 2. The charge on the hydrogen is plus 1. And if you have plus 1 times 2, it's plus 2. Negative 2 times 1, it's negative 2. That's why it's H2SO4, not HSO4 or uh, H2SO3 so and so on. And, um, it's you know, we, we could we could go on and on. I'll just give a couple more examples. Something like um, carbon and chlorine. All right. Well, chlorine is more electronegative. Minus one is the charge. You have to draw your elements in. And the charge on the carbon is going to be plus four since it's in group four. It has four balanced electrons to give. How do you get an overall net charge of zero? Well. Have, uh, least common multiples four, so it's positive four times one is positive four. Negative one times four is um, negative four. So if you have only carbon and chlorine, you know that the molecule has to be carbon tetrachloride, which is CCl4.